Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I think you can hear husband on the treadmill upstairs. Let me close the door, hold on. Hopefully that is fixed now, okay. If there are loud treadmill sounds, I apologize. This is the only chance that I have to film and this is the time that he happens to be working out. So welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my first ever Moxie Life goal setting video. Uh, previously in past years I have used the power sheets um, I did switch off the power sheets this year last year I was really just not like vibes were off the whole year for some unexplained reason and I couldn't get into it and I couldn't get in a groove of using them regularly and then they got bought out by a different company called the Daily Grace and I just didn't feel good continuing to use them but it was like uh, maybe everything happens for a reason because I was like struggling with trying to use them last year anyway and I don't know why my last year my 2022 um, so that's one thing that I was thinking about I didn't really go through I did kind of have my 2022 power sheets to the side while I was starting my moxie life goal setting system for 2023 um, but I didn't really go through and be like did I achieve my goals and check off did I achieve all eight of my goals well, should we talk about that? Let's talk about that. Okay, so I did go and get, just out of curiosity, my 2022 power sheets that I filled out in the beginning, oh, I filled it out in December of 2021, in the beginning of January 2022. So I did two, um, they do a quarterly refresh, so I did my original yearly goals, and then I didn't do the spring refresh, but I did do the summer refresh, and then I was already done using them in the fall. So I didn't do the fall refresh. So I did one of the three, right? Yeah, there's three three refreshes. I did one of the three. So I wanted to go over briefly um, my original yearly goals for 2022. And these are kind of vague. And then underneath the vagueness, I broke them down further. And that's what all these pages are. We're just going to go over the, the main parts. So um, take better care of my body was the first one. Grow my YouTube channel. Care for the home that I love. 40 days of travel for my 40th birthday scrapbook and memory keep, embrace my runner truth, and make time for what moves me. Those are my original yearly goals. Um, I can tell you that some of them stayed on the second part. Um, take better care of my body was really a complicated thing in 2022, and it carries over into 2023. That's one of my major focuses for 2023. Um, I really, I got better at eating veggies and tracking my calories. I don't think I really took good care of my body though, overall. I kind of ran my body into the ground in 2022, if I'm being honest with myself. So yeah, um, grow my YouTube channel. I grew it a little bit. I have more followers at the end of 2022 than I did at the beginning of it. Did it go the way that I wanted it to? No, part of that, a big part of that was consistency that I just kind of fell off because it was a, was a strange year 2022 was a strange year um care for the home that i love i did that stay on that did not i did some stuff in the garden i did some like major decluttering tasks um i did a little bit on that i'll say i made some progress on that perhaps not as much as i would have liked to have done but the big thing was we remodeled the attic and that was a huge thing and i did start my new garden plan um i started putting in a new retaining not retaining wall edging wall and then I kind of ran out of steam when summer travel started bumping up. Uh, so the 40 days of travel, let's go right off the bat here. That I smashed that goal out of the park. I fucking killed it. I did 53 days of travel. 53 days of travel in 2022. Um, and that's not including, I didn't count. The way that I counted it was, I counted the day that we would arrive a place. Like, so like when we went to, Harper's Ferry. We drove out on Friday. So I counted Friday, but then we drove home on Monday and I didn't count Monday because it was really just like get up, pack a car and go home. That's how I counted that. So it was 53 days of actual like travel and enjoying and sightseeing basically. I also did not count. We had to go to Connecticut for um, husband's grandma's memorial weekend. I did not count that because that was like not a pleasure travel. That was like a sad thing travel. Uh, scrapbook and memory keep. I fucking sucked at this. Oh my God, I was so bad at this. I fell off my bullet journal completely. 
I was not memory keeping in there every day like I usually do. I did not touch scrapbooking. I kind of did like a little tiny start to December daily. Um, I did organize all my ephemera so it's like ready to go for scrapbooking, but I just, that was one of those things that I did not make time for at all in 2022. Um, embrace my runner truth. I, I'm still working on that. I was having a very complicated relationship with running at the end of December 2021, beginning of 2022. It only got more complicated in the first few months. And now it's it's pretty good right now. We're okay. We were complicated for a while. Now we're, we're okay, kind of. I don't know. So I'm gonna say, yeah, it's complicated. And I, and I did embrace those parts of it. And then make time for what moved me. I mean, travel aside, like I wanted this to mean going to a coffee shop and writing or going dancing or spending time scrapbooking, playing World of Warcraft, like doing those things that like I love that are fun. Aside from travel, I really was like, this was a struggle for me. Um, yeah, so those are my beginning of the year. When I did my refresh in, this was in July, I think that I did this. Yeah, it must've been July. Um, you'll see that I kept Take Better Care of My Body and Scrapbook and Memory Keep. Uh, um, yeah, we already talked about, those didn't go so well. Uh, but then instead of grow my YouTube channel, I did reestablish my YouTube channel because those, by the point that I did this, I had really like fallen off of posting regularly. I was like really good at posting twice a week and then I just kind of like, um, so I will say that I am in a better groove with that now. And I did get caught up in all of my vlogs, posting all of my vlogs. And I did the full December, I'm oh, not December daily. I did the full vlogmas this year in 2022. So yeah, let's say we, we did a pretty good job of that. Train for the Indianapolis Marathon. I ran the Indianapolis Marathon and it was a fucking difficult, but it was wonderful and so fun. And I bought the finisher's jacket because I was like, I don't care how much this costs, it's worth it to me. <laughs> so I did that. Uh, 40 days of travel was on there, obviously. Spend time in nature. Uh, I could have done a little bit better with that. Um, yeah, I wanted to do like more trail running and hiking and I, you know, just, I didn't do quite as much as I would have liked to. So I, I could have done better with that. And spending time outside. I really did not spend much time outside. Like I have a patio and I like to sit outside and have my coffee in the mornings in the summer when it's sunny. And I just kind of like, mm, I just didn't do it. Mm, I didn't. And then um, complete my license renewal. I re we renew, I'm a pharmacist. We renew our licenses every two years. And I did that. I am able to continue my practice of pharmacy. So um, so that was looking back on what my goals were for 2022. And like I said, that was the power sheet. So different system than what I am using this year. So um, I feel like I did about like 42% of my goals. Cause like I crushed the travel goal and I like, Halfway did some of the things and some of the things I didn't do at all. So we'll just say like 42%, right? That's not bad. 2022 was a weird year. Did anybody else feel like 2022 was a weird year? I felt like it was my rebuilding year. 2020 blindsided me. 2021 was the worst year of my life. I lost my dad in August. Um, we had some great moments. You know, we had eight wonderful months with him um, in 2021. And that was wonderful. We did have like, so many good memories and so many good moments, but like that, like just, it just destroyed me emotionally. And the worry constantly of, you know, is the chemo working? Is the chemo not working? The stress that was behind everything all the time took a big toll on me too. Um, so it had its ups and downs, but overall like such a hard year. And so I felt like 2022 was like really like me coming up out of the, coming out of the dark just trying to get back to like baseline of this is how life is and this is what I do. And did I overload that time with a lot of travel? And yeah, I did. I did because travel was the one thing that was like consistent this year that I was like looking forward to, helping me with my depression, really having a blast with it. Um, I did a lot of really good trips in 2022 and I am on my way of doing a lot of good trips in 2023, whether or not I should be doing them. I turned 40 in October of 2022. And so I was like, I wanna do, what I would love to have done is done 40 days of consecutive travel, like 20 days before my birthday and 20 days after my birthday. Can't get that much time off of work, obviously. Um, 
So I just did it for the whole year and it worked and it was wonderful. And that was one of the bright spots of my 2022. So, um, yeah, it was like a rebuilding year is the best way that I can describe it. It was like, I have to get back to basic minimum functioning. And now 2023, as you will see, I'm hoping to get to like functioning a little bit more than that. Like you've heard me say this in my other videos. So, but if you're only watching the goal setting videos, you haven't, and it sounds new and exciting. Um, 2022 was like getting to 500 as a baseball team. Like when the pirates got to 500 that one year, we were like so excited because they had 13 consecutive losing seasons or something like that. And now maybe I'm going to be a little bit over 500 this year. You know, like I got to like, I remembered how life works and how to do things and how to be a grown up and how to enjoy things. And now I'm like, we're going to do that a little bit more in 2023. That's, that's the hope at least. So, uh, what I am using, this may look unusual to you because it is my custom situation that I made. So I am using the Moxie Life goal setting notebooks. It's the goal setting companion notebooks. Um, if you get them, they are quarterly. This is what the inside, oh, come on, focus my dude. This is what the inside looks like. Um, they come in these little like vegan leather, whatever the hell vegan leather actually is, um, covers and there's four of them, they're quarterly. I had the original goal setting notebook, the first quarter, and then I also got the reflections and intentions notebooks. Um, so those are in there as well. Whoa. We have the daily intentions notebook. The daily intentions is in here. And also the daily reflections and gratitude is in here. Let's see if I can get the lighting to work. Um, so what I did was I had the first quarter and I think it's just the first quarter. So what I did was I had the first quarter goal setting companion notebook, daily intentions, and daily gratitude and reflections all together, bound together with coil at Kinko's. I just took it to Kinko's because I like the coil binding. It's just easier for me to work with than a lay flat. And I also wanted to have like each quarter as I'm working with it all in one place. So I wasn't having to cart three notebooks around, especially because I'm gonna be traveling. So anyway, that said, um, this is the Moxie Life goal setting system. So the way that Moxie Life has you start is that you do the life compass. I don't know if you can see my compass or not. It's kind of hard to tell on here too, like what it is because the autofocus is just like not working. Okay, um, pretend that you could see that because I know you couldn't. So they have the different areas of life, right? So Moxie Life has eight different areas of life and they, you do your assessment. So this is similar if you use power sheets, you did a similar thing with the power sheets. Um, so it was easy kind of to transition to this. I actually like this a lot better once I finally did it. Um, to, so to tell you, I decided I was gonna stop using the power sheets last fall. And then I, you can download free um, workbook pages from Moxie Life's website. And that's what I did to try it out and see if I liked it. I ended up, I printed those out and then I had them bound um, at Staples into like a little notebook thing and ended up really loving it. So what I like better about the Moxie Life is it's more guided. Cause I feel like when you sit down and you're like, you know, it, with the power sheets, I would be like personal life what does that mean? You know, like, oh, okay. But then it tells me like my basic needs are taken care of. I feel happy. Like it, it gives you these like things of like, this is what makes up your personal life area of life, or this is what makes up your fun and recreation. So I liked, I like the fact that the Moxie life gives you a lot more guidance to help you think these things through because it's fucking tough. And like, especially when you're like all like mm, starstruck over new years and new goals and stuff, it's easy to just get like, huge with your ideas or get stuck that you have no ideas one or the other and this really helped me so um i'll go through these and i'll tell you so the first section is the personal section my score for the i did this the last the first day of the new year i think i think i did it on the first i can't remember now i might have actually done this the last couple days of december but regardless the beginning of January, end of December. Um, so I gave myself a 6.8 was my total score. So what you, they, you, they give you all the line items. You put your score one to 10 on the line items and then you tally them up and divide them by eight because there's eight line items per area of life. So 
Uh, my basic needs are taken care of nine, like that That one is solid, that we're good. Um, I generally feel happy and fulfilled. I gave myself a five. I have depression. I have depression and anxiety. I have lived with them for, I mean, anxiety, I've lived with all my life, depression since, probably since college. Maybe before that and I just didn't know what it was, but, um, so yeah, happy and fulfilled is a, is a struggle sometimes. I have a positive attitude and outlook on life. I gave myself a six. I think I'm a little bit better on that than happy and fulfilled, but still. Uh, I give myself grace for my limits and imperfections. I said a five. I regularly take time for life planning, reflection, and self-care. That one got a three. If you remember my uh, evaluation of my goals when I said that I did not take better care of my body. Yeah, that's why. Uh, I'm comfortable t spending time alone. I gave myself a 10 because I do love alone time. Like I travel alone. If if that's like if no one can go with me, I'm like, well, I'm just good for myself for a little while. I, and yeah, I love it. Uh, uh, for there are hobbies and interests that I engage in regularly. I gave myself a seven because I do do my YouTube channel consistently, um, and I do play World of Warcraft a little bit more. Well, I shouldn't give myself credit for that because I've just started getting back into that. But I do run with my friends. Um, so yeah. I engage in them. I don't know that I take enough time, but I do engage in them. And then it said, um, there are personal goals or projects that I want to achieve or complete. And I gave myself a 10 because I super duper want to achieve and complete things. Now it doesn't ask about the follow up in the follow through. You'll see that. So yeah, 6.8 was my score for the personal section for the fun and recreation area of life. My overall score was a 5.7. You may be saying, Fox, you just told me that you traveled 53 days out of the year. And I know that's true but I relied too heavily on traveling to be the thing to get me through the other bullshit. And that's the problem. I don't do a good job on my days off where I don't have a specific task or event or travel plan or something like that on like taking care of myself and doing things that build me up. I get very doom scrolly obsessive about what's going on at work when I'm not there. Like I, that's what I have to work on. So to break the fun and recreation goal down, um, I said an eight for I take regularly planned vacations and or time off. I do, you know that. Uh, I create moments for rest and rejuvenation. That one got a two because sometimes I need a vacation after my vacation. I'm not good at resting, not at all. Uh, I gave myself permission to have fun without feeling guilty. That one got a three because as I said, if I don't have something specific that I'm out of town, I feel like, oh God, there's something I should be doing. There's some matter of consequence, either work or chores or others. I mean, grown up things. Um, I have fun in ways that serve my highest and best self. I said a seven for that. I don't really know what that means. Um, I don't do anything dangerous or questionable. So, you know, and I try to do things that make me feel good and alive. So that's kind of how I interpreted that. Um, I reward myself when I accomplish a goal. I set a six. I, I do that some of the time. I do things on a regular basis that bring me joy. I set a six again. The travel is carrying all of the weight here. And the rest of the time is kind of, um, I spend enough time with people that I enjoy. I said a seven because I really do think that I, if I can't be with my friends, I'm texting with my friends. I spend a lot of time with husband and a lot of time with my mom. Those are my two favorite people to hang out with. And then I said my social interactions are enjoyable, meaning, and fun. I said a seven for that as well. Um, I don't do a lot of things. So the things that I do are things that I enjoy. The next one is work and learning. And I got a 4.1 overall on work and learning. 2022 work life was not a good time but it's gonna get better it's gonna get better i am enthusiastic about and engaged in what i'm doing for my life's work i said five i yeah i think so i'm fulfilled by the work that i do and i believe it adds value i said five my work is a true fit for my purpose, strengths, and personal gifts. I said five because I think it is, but I think there's probably other stuff that would be two. I don't know. I am contributing to the work the way that I desire. I said four. I work for corporate America retail. There's only so much you can do. Um, I have positive interactions at work. Oh, that one got a bad score. That got a three. People are getting mean. 
please be nice to your pharmacist and your bartender and your server and your cashier. Please. Please. Um, but it was, it was other stuff too. I expand my skills through continued growth and development. I set a three. Actually, looking back on this, I probably should have given myself something more because I do enjoy my continuing education. Uh, I have an actionable plan to support the growth and success I desire. I said two because I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what a, an actionable plan to support the growth and success I desire. What is the growth and success that I desire? I don't know. I don't know. I got a lot of work to do on work. I am curious and eager to learn. I did say six. I do love learning. Learning is like my favorite. Um, I do think some of this too, because it's work and learning. I feel like there's a lot of things that like I want to do. Like I, I hate side hustle as a term, but like there's a lot of things that I would like to do in addition to what I do or like, I don't know, learning that I want to do courses that I want to take. And I don't really make time for that ever or have time for that ever. So I think that that's part of what brought this score down, but um, positive interactions at work, that's a complicated one. Um, that's a complicated one and it's improving. It's already improving this year for reasons. Family and relationships area of life. I gave myself a 6.1. I am present with my family, friends, and or significant other. I said seven, because I'm pretty, pretty good. Uh, I share mutual love, respect, and appreciation with my loved ones. I get an eight, same thing. I have healthy boundaries. I said five. I don't really have healthy boundaries. If someone asks me to do something or help with something or be somewhere, I'm always like, yeah, I'll make it work. Not good at boundaries. I am free from toxic relationships. Yeah, I said a six. I'm pretty good with that. I'm pretty good at avoiding toxic relationships. I experience vulnerability and intimacy in my personal relationships. That question makes me uncomfortable, but I gave myself a five because I think I do okay. I have a sense of community and belonging where I live, work, and play. I said six. I have clarity and peace in the areas I feel like I'm lacking. I said six. I'm actively designing what I want for my relationships. That seems really complicated, so I just said six. So 6.1 for family and relationships. Some of those were a little touchy-feely for me, and I didn't really want to get touchy-feely, okay? Because it's not really my style. And now we get to the lowest score of the entire areas of life section. Health and wellness. I got a 3.1, y'all. A 3.1. Uh, I take care of my physical, mental, and emotional health. That one got a two because I um, I do brush my teeth and floss, and um, I take vitamins. I do those things. I eat well and drink plenty of water. I said four. I probably could have given myself a little bit higher score on that, but um, that was before I was 14 days into no takeout January. I wrote this, so things have improved already. I have a regular exercise routine. I said six. I have a regular running routine, but I'm not very good at strength training. So like I'm getting a little bit more than half of it, but not enough. Uh, I have a healthy self image. That one got a one. That one got a one. Uh, I have healed from any stress or trauma that I've experienced. I said two. That one got a two. I feel strong in body, heart, and mind. That also got a two. You know what I'm doing, friends? My best. I'm doing my best. I'm equipped to handle life's events with strength and vitality. Um, I got a four on that one, and that was all in the strength, not so much in the vitality. But we'll get there. That's why we're doing this, because we're going to get better. That's the whole point of this, is we're going to be like, look how shitty I was, and then I'm going to be so good. It's going to be amazing. Spiritual and personal growth is the next area of life. I got a 5.5 on that. I have identified what my own definition of spirituality is. I said seven because I feel pretty, pretty grounded in my woo-woo-ness. I do. I engage in regular spiritual practice. I gave myself a three because I do not do that, even though I know an idea of what that looks like. I invest time and energy into my personal and spiritual growth. I gave a three because again, when do I ever do that? Never. My words, thoughts, and actions are congruent with my beliefs and actions. That I did, my beliefs and values. I did say eight for that because I think that's like pretty basic and important that you do that, you know, that you do things that you, that back up your value. Yeah. 
I seek to learn new things about myself and others. I said eight because I do like to learn new things and I like to listen to people and I like to follow a lot of things on Instagram that teach me stuff. So that's something. I feel clear and connected to what my guiding principles are. I said seven because I feel like I have a solid handle on that. Be excellent to each other. Don't be a dick. That's my, my guiding principles. Uh, respect Mother Earth. That's not all. I practice gratitude regularly. I said four. I'm very bad at that. Um, I started doing that more now that I have the gratitude and reflections page, but I'm very inconsistent with that. So still, we're still at a four. Um, I have found peace and forgiveness where there has been pain and suffering. I said a four. <sighs> Y'all, I am a Libra. We will hold a grudge to the grave and I need to work on that. It's not cool. It's not helping me. It's not helping anybody. We need to work on that. Next up is the financial area of life. I got a 6.8. I always get squeamish during the financial section because I feel like this is a grown up thing that I should know how to do and I don't know how to do it. I believe in my ability to acquire wealth. I said a five. Okay, so today I just listened to um, If Books Could Kill podcast. It's Michael Hobbs and I can't remember the other guy. It's Michael Hobbs' new podcast. He's from Maintenance Phase, previously from You're Wrong About. And they're reviewing books and they're, it's amazing. They're reviewing the worst books and it's so good. And they just reviewed The Secret, which I kind of remember hearing about in like whenever that came out in the 2000s. And it's about positive thinking and manifesting and blah, blah, blah. Um, I believe in my ability to acquire wealth. I'm not very good at manifesting. So I said five. Um, yeah, positive thinking and my ability to, yeah. Uh, I am implementing the systems and skills needed to meet my financial goals. I said five. I'm doing the like having a job and making the money that you need to live part, but like the like meeting my financial goals. I want, y'all, I want a bathroom remodel and I want a fireplace and then I want a lake house. I'm not doing anything to implement those goals. I got to work on that shit. I have streamlined and automated my financial dealings. I gave myself a six, but the streamlining is basically a husband does a lot of it. I have a healthy relationship with money. I said eight. I don't feel any like need to overspend and I feel like I can save when I need to and want to. I feel like I have a good, my, my parents instilled a good sense of like how to be thrifty and save money when you need to. Yeah, I think I feel good about that. I have financial and economic security. I said nine. We're good. We're doing well. Um, I have a favorable credit rating. I said 10 because I am proud of my credit rating. I have worked on this since age 17 and it is chef's kiss. I spend with, I spend my money. Re Ooh, I, can't read. I spend my money responsibly and live within my means. I said seven because so far so good, but we got to watch a little. I have a financial plan for the future and contribute to it regularly. I said a five because I do have a 401k, but only a five because I don't know what to do with it. And then finally, I think this is the second, I know work and learning had the second lowest score. This is the third lowest score is the physical environment area of life. Um, I am up to date on necessary repairs and maintenance. I said a seven because we are up to date on things, except for we have to have our vents clean. That's like the big one. Um, there are physical areas where I can go to recharge and experience comfort. I said a five because things are a little cluttered and messy in my house. My environments support having positive energy, good habits, and personal success. I said a three because see previous comment, RE, things are a little cluttered and out of control sometimes. I feel supported in the management of my home. I said a five because husband will do stuff, but you have to like ask him and like tell him why it matters and like write a small thesis to be like, actually, we need to do this every single week. It's important to do this every single, you know, like, you know how husbands are, you know. They're great. And there's some things that he's mm, perfect about, but some things you have to just be like, at the end of the night, just put the fucking clickers in the little clicker holder before you go to bed after you turn the TV off. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't sink in. My home, car, and workplace are clean and safe. I said a four. They're safe, but are they clean? <laughs> My physical environment is free from clutter and excess. 
I said a three. I enjoy spending time in my personal spaces. I said a five because I do like my decor. And I feel organized, I said two, because I feel the opposite of organized. Whatever that is. So those are the areas of life, and then you put them in this little wheel here on the compass, and then you say where you'd like to get. So I kind of, most things I said I wanted to improve by like two points at the most, one or two points, with the exception of health and wellness, I would like to go from a three, whatever, a 3.1 to an eight. This is like by the end of the year that I'm thinking, not like tomorrow, you know? And then my fun and recreation, I wanted it to go from a 5.7 to an eight. And my physical environment, I wanted to go from a four to a nine. Um, everything else I just kind of was like go up like one or two, but those three, I was like, those are the ones we gotta, we gotta hit hard. So the next part of the book is intention. So what could I use more of in my life this year? I think I'm getting too close to the camera. Maybe I'm too far away. I said organization, joy, travel, good dinners, and time in the desert. What could I use less of this year? Time wasted, anxiety, depression, worry, clutter, stress, and self-hate. Yeah, um, time wasted is a big one. I. It's a, it's a vicious cycle when my depression starts going and my anxiety starts going, I start to get to a point where thinking about doing any of the things that I like that build me up, that make me feel alive, those things stress me out, the thought of doing them. And so I just doom scroll or read garbage websites or just zone out or, you know, like I'm not a, um, I'm not like a TV watcher much, but like if I was a TV watcher, I would probably just be like, let me watch my comfort show. Like that would be what I would be doing. So um, yeah, time wasted is a big one. What characteristics would I like to nurture this year? Creativity is my number one and confidence is the other one. Um, three habits I want to develop this year are a morning routine, going back to daily fitness. I was so, for like eight years, I was great at daily fitness and then I've just kind of fallen off. Um, and also creativity time. So doing something creative every day, if it's editing photos, editing a video, writing, scrapbooking, something creative. This year I will be more organized, creative, and grounded. I will be more open to enjoying my time. That's what I really wanna do, is like not waste time by being like stressed and anxious and worrying about things. Cause I, I do that a lot. When I have free time, I'm often distracted and my brain is elsewhere in a place that's not good. Um, I will do less mindless scrolling and worrying. As I just said, I got ahead of myself there. I will give myself grace for having bad depression or anxiety days because they're going to happen. They're part of me. Um, my therapist basically was like, these are part of you. They're not going to just magically go away. But the important thing is that you know how to handle bad days and you know how to get through them and you will get through them. So that's what I'm thinking about. I will let go of self-hate and worrying about pleasing everyone, setting some boundaries. Could we set some boundaries in 2023? And I will embrace creativity, travel, becoming a foodie again, because we have been bad at that. And that's something that we love is going out to dinner, uh, embracing my runner truth. So that has uh, embraced my runner truth from 2022 goals has made it onto 2023 goals. So my word for the year is alive. This is what I wrote about it. What my word means to me. I want to feel twice as alive as often as possible. Okay, twice as alive is this thing that this friend from college said, where it's like that feeling that you feel when you're at the Dave Matthews concert and they play so right and you feel like your heart is going to explode and not from like some kind of terrible disease that's in your heart, just because your heart is so happy that it's just going to burst out of your just into happiness. That feeling, that's the feeling. That's twice as alive. Um, anyway. I want to feel twice as alive as often as possible. I want to do things that build me up and make me feel alive. And also I want to fight my depression and stay alive. I felt like the word alive was important to me for two reasons. One, the twice as alive feeling, seeking out the things that make me feel so good that I just feel like, mm. and two, I have depression. Some days it's hard to want to be alive. It's just the truth. It's just part of how my brain is. And I have to fight through that and I do and so far so good I've been successful um, so I felt like you know alive in that way meant um, 
reminding myself why it's important to be alive. I was talking with my friend Sarah over the weekend and she's like, you know, you have that list that when you feel like, why am I here and what's the purpose and what am I even doing with anything that you go to your list and you go, these are the reasons that I'm alive. These are the things that, that, that keep me here. Um, that's, that's the sad part of my word of the year. There's the happy part and then there's the sad part, but I feel a big connection to this word. I feel more connected to this word this year than I have to my other words of the year previously. And I had some good words of the year. Actually, the one I felt the most connected with was 2019. It was tub thumping. Yes, like the Chumbawamba song from the 90s, which is my fucking theme song. I love it. Um, but it was a depression anthem. Again, it was, I get knocked down, but I get up again and you're never gonna keep me down. So I felt very connected to tub thumping and I feel very connected to alive. And, and a song that makes me feel twice as alive when it gets played at the club is so alive by love and rockets it was all meant to be it's all coming together it's all coming together okay anyway let's move on this video is going to be 100 years long so they go through some like goal stuff the types of goals the weekly actions blah 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 and then here is the um here's the one the page that you get to have fun with right so so this is kind of like if comparing it to the power sheets, the like where you brainstorm your goals for the year and like things that you want to do. And it's just like big picture, get excited, get starstruck at your potential, that kind of stuff. So um, I don't know if you can see. There you go, you can see that mostly. So we'll just read through it. Uh, so use this space to create a list or a mind map of ideas, dreams, and goals for the coming year. Have fun, the possibilities are endless. So here's what I've got. Travel, believe in myself, get caught up on photo edits, go to the flea. I didn't go to the flea in 2022 at all. Who does that? Who avoids the flea for an entire fucking summer? Me, I did. Uh, morning routine, be a foodie again, be active with the Heart Breathings community. I really fell in love with working with those sprint groups um, in the Heart Breathings, Sarah Cannon's group in November with National Novel Writing Month. Um, and I really wanna, stay with that cemetery time yes weird 90s goth cemetery time is my favorite time uh visit at least five national park sites work through cookbook is a dream that i have had to like make every recipe in a cookbook at some point uh see dave matthews band journal every day work on my youtube videos finish my garden plan uh the vegas half marathon running that next month um sorry these are like they're all overlapping here run in general run be organized be real always renew our passports oh, some of these are matters of consequence in here um lose weight and get strong we won't talk too much about that i promise but that'll be its own video when i'm ready to talk about it uh organize my washi tape and my scrapbook supplies scrapbook write be less anxious inbox zero every day i've been doing pretty well with that 16 days into the month um, go to the Channel Islands, have a wine night, trail runs, and I'm doing a trail race in April. Be outside, let go of work stress, scatter dad's ashes. That's our big trip this summer that we're taking to scatter his ashes. Keep our home tidy, time with friends, feel peace, get a fireplace. See Death Cab and Postal Service, we got tickets. We're going to see them in September. Uh, worry less when I was being authentic. What I meant by that was sometimes I will be like really full on Vince Noir. Um, if you've not watched The Mighty Boosh, I highly recommend it. It's hilarious. It's Noel Fielding is the one character, um, Vince Noir, and we always joke that, that is my like, my movie counterpart, TV show counterpart. Um, but sometimes I get like really earnest and excited and, and authentic and then the next day I'm like, oh my God, I was so annoying. So to just be less, um, less anxious and less hard on myself whenever I go full Vince Noir. Um, time with friends, open a savings account, yet again, another matter of consequence, and of course, the desert. So then we go to our areas of life and we break it down by each area of life with our annual goals. So, for personal, what I did was, they have a, an area that says focus, so I did my focus and then I did like steps underneath it. So my focus for my personal area of life, that sounds dirty, is prioritize the things that make me feel alive. So under that I wrote, do something creative every day, such as journal, scrapbook, edit photos, write, or YouTube videos, participate with the heart breathing community, like I said. 
um, regarding my, I put my YouTube channel under here. So weekly plan with me, vlog, and one other video. And then my morning routine and evening routine. And I need to define what, what is in those two things and try to map out how long it's gonna take me so that I know how much time to set aside for each one. How will my life improve by reaching these personal goals? I'll feel happier, I'll find more purpose and more peace. Fun and recreation, my focus is to be present with my time off and do things that I love. Travel was the number one, so I have some of the trips that we'll be taking this year on here. So the desert, Vegas for the half marathon, California, our road trip, uh, Finger Lakes for my birthday, and DC to see Death Cab and Postal Service. Um, go out to new restaurants with husband. Be seasonally present and embrace each season, even winter. I've been trying really hard to embrace winter. Been watching a lot of videos about Svalbard and the polar night to just get me like, you can get, if they can love the polar night, you can get through January in Pittsburgh. Play World of Warcraft, see Roadside America things in Pittsburgh too. I'd like to see some of the things that are on the Pittsburgh Roadside America, like the seldom seen Greenway and Beachview. That's on my list. Read more, see the Carnegie International. It's only here until April. I know I'm gonna forget about it, so I have to set myself alarms to remember to do it. How will my life improve by reaching these fun and recreation goals? I said, making memories, feeling happy, and having things to look forward to. Because when my depression is bad, having something to look forward to is like the number one motivator to get my ass up and get me moving. To be like, you have to get up. You have this to look forward to. That's just one of my major coping mechanisms that have worked for me. Um, my next area of life is work and learning and my focus is to improve my work-life balance because right now it's very bad. So my number one priority under this is to leave work at work. And what I wrote on here was to be able to move on emotionally after a work call or text. Um, I have been off, I, we do seven on seven off at my job. So I finished my seven days of work and today is my seventh day off. I go back to work tomorrow. I have been talking to work people and work related things multiple times a day, every single one of my seven days off. I need to either find a way to stop doing that and set a boundary and not do that, or I need to figure out a way to address that, compartmentalize it and move on and not let it derail me because I'm very good at getting distracted or angry or annoyed or whatever and then not letting it go. Um, leave myself a tidy store every day. A lot of times at work, we have the tendency to be like, well, we're really busy today, but we're here tomorrow, so we'll just not do it. Um, do one CE a month so that I am on time for my license renewal in 2024. And unlearn the worry habits that I learned in 2022. 2022 was a very rough year career-wise. Um, and I have gotten into a bad mental space and a bad coping situation for a lot of things that worry me. And that's my goal is to work on that. And that goes with leaving work at work. Uh, so how will my life improve by reaching these work and learning goals? Less stress, work is my biggest stressor, I think. More energy for life. I think that's one of the big things that distracts me when I was saying that when I'm home, I'm constantly worrying, like I should be checking with work. What's going on there? What am I missing? What's going on? Is there something that I should have done? I, I need to set a boundary. I need to, to be better with a boundary. So next up is the family and relationships area of life. Um, my focus is spend quality time with people I love. I wanna try one new restaurant a month with husband. Um, the road trip with my mom and husband will be with this for part of it in the summer this year. Vegas trip with my friends, go to the group runs whenever I can. We have a run group, we have two run groups that I'm a part of. Um, try to go to those on my Saturdays off. Um, play World of Warcraft with my mom and my aunt. And chaos time with Danielle, um, that's my very good friend. And we joke and we call her car the chariot of chaos. And we always have too many dogs and it's always just really fun. How will my life improve by reaching these family and relationship goals? Feeling more emotionally fulfilled with loved ones in my life. Next up is the health and wellness. And this is, this is a big one for me. Um, I'm going to talk about weight, not super detailed stuff, but I am gonna talk about weight and counting calories and things like that. Um, so just FYI, that's gonna happen right now. I gained a lot of weight in 2021, 2020, 21, and 22, I have gained weight every year. And it's to a point where now, I now have high blood pressure <laughs> and it's affecting my, the way I feel. Um, I don't have as much energy and I'm feeling 
slower on my runs and not even just slower, but just like it's more of an effort to run um, the way that I used to run. And so I'm really noticing it. And so um, I've said my focus for this year for health and wellness is to lose weight and get stronger. So to combine strength training with also trying to get back down to a, a, a lower weight where I feel more energy and hopefully can go off of blood pressure meds. That's, that's the dream. Now, some of that I'm sure is affected by stress and it's not exclusively that, but the two seemed to coincide enough that I'm like, this is probably part of it. So my steps for that, tracking my macros and log into my tracker daily. Uh, I have an awesome group that I'm working with um, and a nutrition coach and I really like that group, so tracking in with them every day. Um, averaging 30 minutes of fitness a day and 10 minutes of stretching. You know runners don't like to stretch, but we need to. Follow through with my fitness and running calendar, so I work with a running coach, and she gives me not only my runs for the week, but also what I'm supposed to do for my cross training and strength training. Um, following through with that. And then, of course, I put some of my races on here. Uh, the Vegas Half Marathon, Heiner, which is a trail race in April. And then a spring race and a fall marathon. I definitely want to do a marathon in the fall. I don't know what my spring race is going to be. I'm hoping it's going to be a marathon in May, but I haven't fully set that in motion yet. Um, meal plan and cook HelloFresh at home instead of doing takeout. I don't want to brag, but so far we're crushing that goal. And go dancing at least once a month because that is a good fitness. So I said, how will my life improve? Feel more confident, crush my running goals, and fit into more of my clothes. Um, a lot of my clothes are just not really fitting and I have like I just kind of wear the same things over and over because that's the only ones that fit and I don't really want to buy more yet I don't know so yeah I didn't talk too much about it and I don't have like a goal of how much I want to lose I just want to lose some more that I feel I'm going to titrate it to feeling better <laughs> that's what we're going to do so I do have specific macros that I am going for. Um, so I have that specifically, and I have my specific 30 minutes of fitness goals. Um, and ultimately my goal is two times a week strength training. So I have like those things, um, but I don't have a specific weight or how many pounds I wanna lose or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of titrate it to, am I feeling better? Then maybe I can slow down here and maintain. So we're done talking about that. We can move on. I just didn't want anybody to be like, oh, I don't wanna hear this stuff. I'm gonna try not to talk about it on these videos. It'll probably be its own video if I do talk about it. So next up is spiritual and personal growth. My focus is to feel closer to nature and the earth. So my steps for that are to be, as out, be outside as often as possible, be seasonally present and embrace each season. Um, read my tarot cards daily, journal daily, visit at least five national park sites because visiting national park sites is like, that's my version of church. Um, get woo woo in the desert and see Dave Matthews Band. How will my life improve by reaching these spiritual and personal growth goals? I will feel more fulfilled and settled, more in touch with the earth. Um, my financial goals, for the financial area of life, my focus is to cut back on unnecessary spending and save for big ticket items. So I want to get quotes for a fireplace and a bathroom remodel, which are the two big home improvement things that we have left on the house. Uh, I wanna open a savings account because we can be getting at least a little bit of interest, I think. I don't know how that works, but I'm pretty sure you get at least like a couple dollars. And review our budget with husband to see if there's any subscriptions that we can cut. Um, we've already done one step on that. We cut his Peloton subscription because he hasn't been using it. We put it on hold, so. How will my life improve by reaching these financial goals? A fireplace will make me so happy and so will a new bathroom. And the final, step, the final area of life is the physical environment. My focus is to make our home a place of cozy, calm, and welcome. Uh, declutter was the first thing that I wrote on here. I know I need to do it. Organize my crafting supplies. I have a note on here, go to Ikea. I wanted to get a new container. I need something better to hold all of my scrapbooking supplies and my stories by the month kits. Keep the entryway clean. This is a hard one because when we come in the house, we have shopping bags or I have stuff from work. We have, we've been away and we travel. It just gets put in the entryway until whenever. Landscape the front garden areas and finish the back garden layout, which I started last summer. Got derailed, never finished. Uh, the guest room closet, which is now husband's office. I need to go through there and kind of just do a big decluttering. That's where I keep my candles. That's where we keep our medicine. Um, that's where we keep our travel supplies. I need to go through that. Um, declutter clothes. I need to kind of do like some of these things I'm not wearing. They don't fit anymore and I need to get rid of them. 
and create cleaning routines for daily tidying. So like, what, can, what do I have to do? What's 15 minutes that I can do every single day that will make the house look better? I said, how will my life improve by reaching these physical environment goals? Less time wasted looking for things, more peace and less anxiety. The next thing that they have you do in here is a vision board. I chose not to do a vision board because I don't know, I don't have the supplies. The supplies, getting the supplies out to make a vision board just stresses me out, so. Um, I was going to talk about my monthly goals, but I think I'm gonna do that in a separate video. Oh, maybe I can squeeze it in, okay. My monthly goals for the month of January. For personal, morning, evening, and YouTube routines, basically setting routines. So my morning routine, I wanna make sure that I'm editing my photos from the day before, doing my bullet journal, checking in with my planner, checking my blood pressure, doing my intentions in here, and reading my tarot. Evening, washing my lashes, I get a lash, eyelash extensions, um, brush and floss, obviously, and I need to do some nighttime skincare, which I'm not very good about. And YouTube, I wanna set up a schedule of doing two videos every week and a third video um, when I do this video, and. I have a couple other things I want to do, like flip through a few other items. So um, a Tuesday plan with me and a Thursday vlog, and then try to put in at least one other video in the month. For fun and recreation, my focus is get my brain right in the desert and embrace fun in January. Now I will tell you, the goals that I set out in here didn't happen because, well, the desert is going to happen. It's happening in 10 days. But um, the other four things that I had on here all happened, were happening the weekend of the weekend that husband and I both had COVID. We both got COVID January 2nd. Well, I got it January 2nd and he got it later that week. Um, so the other things that were on here, we didn't do, but we are still gonna do the desert. Work and learning, my focus for the month of January is to settle in with my new district. We did have a redistricting. We have a new manager, so I just try to get settled into the new flow of things. Um, try to leave a clean store for myself. Like I was saying, like don't be like, well, I'll just clean up the mess tomorrow because I'm the one that's gonna be here. No. Um, I wanna try to get two CEs done. And most importantly, and I wrote this on capitals, take it one day at a time. It's not gonna get better overnight. I didn't get bad mentally overnight. I'm not gonna get better mentally overnight. Family and relationships. My focus was to throw this wine night that we were supposed to be throwing on January 14th, but we had to reschedule it because of COVID. So that's been rescheduled for February, but that was my focus and it didn't happen. Um, my health and wellness. I put an arbitrary goal of losing five pounds. I don't, if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I just wanted to like, I just I thought that was pretty reasonable for a month. Um, track macros every day and 30 or, 30 or more minutes of fitness a day. Stretch every day, no grazing, cause that's what I do. I kind of just like snack and then I walk out and I snack and then walk out and then try to keep my water 110 ounces a day. My spiritual and personal growth goals for the month of January are focused on journaling and reflection, doing my daily journaling and my bullet journal, my daily tarot cards, wheel of the year uh, tarot reading, which I did, I had that done over the weekend, and get woo woo in the desert. My financial uh, monthly goal focus was to check our subscriptions and get our fireplace quote. I don't think I'm gonna get the fireplace quote just because we lost basically a whole week to COVID. Um, and that would have been time that I could have done that. We did start going through the monthly subscriptions and found a few things that we could cancel. So that we've already done that part. Uh, physical environment, my focus is our downstairs. So tidying the hallway and the entryway, decluttering, like where our shoes, we have like one of those little shoe holder thingies, put away our Christmas decorations and the tree, put up the Valentine's Day decorations and clean the floors and walls. So those are my monthly goals. That's my yearly goals. This is my setup. This is gonna be the planner that I'm working in. I do weekly goals in here as well. They have, you know, weekly, and I like that better than the power sheets as well. Instead of having the weekly tasks addressed once a month, you address them every week. And I really like that. It gets you to touch in, touch in? Check in more, touch base with yourself and your goals, make adjustments, carry things over when you need to, cross things out when you're like, I didn't need to do that. I really like the way that this is set up. So I'll be using the Moxie Life Goal Setting Companion Notebooks um, this year for my planning, for my goal setting, and I hope that you will follow along. I'll be doing a monthly video of my monthly goals, um, and then time I do like a reset or a compass realignment. I don't know if they have you do them quarterly or not. I am my first year using these, so. Um, yeah, so that is where we are right now. The future looks so bright. So, oh my God, I just made, I just look like Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> I may have goals. 
but none of them are to be, stop being the weird goth girl, so I promise that. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you are new here. I do publish a plan with me and a weekly vlog every single week, and I'll be doing, I will be doing monthly videos for the Moxie Life Goal Setting System. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care of yourselves and take care of each other, and I will see you in my next video.